Here we go. Yay. Welcome to Always Acting Up. My name is Castlin, and this is the podcast where I'm going to be sharing all of my personal journeys and stories as an actress in the entertainment industry. So this episode, we are going to be talking about the quarantine blues, all the different feelings that I've been having, and I have a special guest on here today to kind of be my therapist and talk about it. But first, I do want to give a shout out to you guys who are going to be following on YouTube, podcast, I'm officially up on all platforms, Instagram, and of course, I do have to give a very special shout out to my producer, Hisani Johnson. Okay, and as I mentioned, I do have a very special guest calling in today, and I'm very excited to have this person on. She is a friend of mine for quite a long time now, a dancer in Los Angeles and an actress. We have Miss Lori Huff. Yay! Hi, guys. Hi, <laughs> So I... I chose you specifically because when I was kind of asking everybody how they were feeling during this quarantine, um, I was getting a lot of different feelings and I was kind of saying like, I'm having this weird guilt and nobody else was sort of experiencing what I was experiencing. And I was kind of saying like, I have been so incredibly productive. I have done every stinking virtual audition. I'm in my second acting class right now during Zoom. I made a short film. I went down to the strip to take pictures. And there was a part of me that was like, oh my God, this is great. And then I was like, wow, that I that's terrible. I started feeling so guilty for being so productive during this time when it's not a good time and there's people struggling and having such horrible things happen to them and their families and they're scared and uh, the job situation. And I can relate because I don't even have a job right now, so I'm not really working either. (laughs) And when I talked to you, Lori, you were saying that you were kind of having the opposite feelings. And this is great because I really want to chat with everyone and we're all in the midst of social distancing so we don't really get to chat with each other that often so how are you doing during this quarantine um well you know i've definitely been through like some extreme feelings um like during this quarantine like from um a lot of extreme feelings from like shock confusion depression um frustration and definitely worry Mm -hmm. Um, right now I feel like I finally reached a more like kind of steady state of just acceptance and resolve. Mm -hmm. Um, so like, I think like one of my biggest overall struggles like right now is just trying to figure out exactly what the world is going to look like going forward so that I can actually plan accordingly. Mm -hmm. Um, like one thing, and I guess like my, my guilt, um, is a little bit more about like not feeling like as productive as I should be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't like to feel like I'm wasting my time and energy. Um, so I want to like focus on what's actually going to be most useful, but I don't know what that is yet. <laughs> it's really, really hard right now. And are you, I feel like you said you were not in LA at the moment. Did you just go somewhere Correct. else or where are you? What you doing? Um, I am, I went back home to stay with my family, um, during the lockdown, um, like the lockdown first happened, I guess it was like, what, like March 17th or something? Sometime in March. We were closed before you guys, I think, but generally March. Yeah. Um, but so like when the official like lockdown happened, um, like, you know, I live by myself in, in Los Angeles mm-hmm. and, um, the initial like couple weeks, like, um, definitely wasn't that bad I mean like I I like my independence like I like my own time um but like obviously like when it was clear that nothing was going on for like multiple months um and like not being able to like work and make any money then you know there's no reason for me to stay there um so like I decided like go back um come back home to like Kentucky um Mm -hmm. stay like with my family here in Kentucky um I just kind of like waited um, initially just to make sure that like I wasn't like developing any symptoms like, yeah. before I came back um, and was staying with my parents. So. 
You know, I, I thought about that too. I was like, you know what? And this is part of like where my mind is like, no, this is wrong. There was a part of me that was like, well, if I'm not going to be working and nothing's going on, I might as well go back home and visit my family. But then I was like, wait a second. The whole reason that this is happening is because we're traveling too much. And I had personally just been, I had gone within one month. I was in New Mexico, obviously here in Vegas. I was in San Jose, Atlanta, Kansas City. And that was all within a period of three weeks. And I actually, yeah, it was exhausting. And I actually thought for a second, like, cause I came back from all that traveling and I was like, I don't feel good at all. And I had a, a mild fever and I was thinking like, do I, do I have it? But it wasn't, I wasn't sure if it was that, or if it was just exhaustion from traveling so much and really me going right. to an airport now to visit my family, who's you know, everyone's got their own personal health issues would be like the worst possible thing ever. And my family's far away. So it's like a struggle because I really want to go and visit them while I have nothing else going on. But that kind of defeats the purpose of staying away from everybody. So I'm here. Well, and, and, you know, it's like, it was definitely something that I struggled with as well. And like really talked, talked it through like with my parents, like my mom in particular, like really wanted me to come. Mm-hmm. Um, and initially I was kind of like a, against it for that reason that saying like I don't want to expose you so like that's why like I waited um, until like the last time so I had really been exposed to anybody else did they make um, you so I, did they make you quarantine sorry, yeah. did they make you quarantine did they like <laughs> they're like now that you're here go to your room um yes and no sort of I mean like um like, I'm not necessarily quarantined away from, like, my family now that, like, we're in the same house. Um, besides, besides just, like, like sleeping, like, separately and stuff like that. Like, um, but, like, we still, like, use the same kitchen. We still use the same bathroom. Yeah. Um, and so it was just more the fact that, like, I was still kind of just, like, quarantining, like, in the home, like, with my family, like. Um, and not going out into the community. Yeah. And, um, like, once I went to the airport. But, like, actually, that was kind of one of, to me, like, one of the better decisions. Like, initially, I was thinking about, like, driving across country. Wow. Um, instead of flying, because, like, I was afraid of, like, the airport. And um, thinking that my, I could reduce my exposure by driving myself. Mm. Um, but then, like, when I ended up, like, going ahead and, like, flying instead... Like, there was, like, maybe, like, 10 people on the plane. Yeah, I heard that. It was actually the best, the best like, airport <laughs> and, like, flying experience that I've, like, ever had. I'm sure you're like, no lines, the whole road to myself. Don't mind if I do. I'll take an extra peanut or pretzel. <laughs> yeah. Um, they actually weren't, they weren't handing out snacks because, because of that. Oh. Um, hmm, that's interesting. Yeah, like, they weren't, like, um, serving, like, any like water or soft, or soft drinks or handing out any snacks. I have to I admit, know, keep a, a whole distance, but. I think that's a little strange because, mm-hmm. well, we're all breathing the same air in a plane, you know, it's all recycled air. So I don't know if there's really that much of a difference between, between breathing in recycled dirty air, then here's a bag of peanuts, but Hey, I don't know anything. <laughs> that's just what I'm saying. I think it's a little interesting, but whatever. Um, so like, what were your thoughts when this all first happened and it was real and the city was literally shutting down? Um, I mean, like, like I said, like, I definitely have, I think my initial, um, like feelings were kind of like extreme, like kind of like shock and confusion and not like really, and kind of thinking that it was an overreaction or like, is this really happening? Yeah. I think we all felt that for a bit. Yeah. <laughs> like, is there not a better way to deal with this? Like, <laughs> mm-hmm. and it's, it's tough. I think being an artist and a dancer, like we go on these, um, roller coaster rides and we're on a roll and we're working in classes and like, we're building up, building up, building up, building up. And then it just stops and you're like, Oh, all right. Okay. I guess I'll just stop. And then it's hard because you're like, well, what do I do now that I'm home all the time? And we just don't really have normal lives. So it's challenging. And I'm sure it's challenging for everybody. Yeah. And, well, and, and it kind of said, jump back to and um, kind of like struggles and things of that nature. And like, 
trying to, to plan for the future. Um, I mean, like, obviously, like, you and I can both, like, relate to the fact that, like, we both have worked a lot of, like, large conventions. Um, mm. And it's, it's pretty clear that those are probably going to be the last things to, like, reopen at this point in time. So, so it's, like, I'm kind of, like, now refocusing on, um, like, utilizing, like, the skills that I would normally have, like, as a presenter for, like, live conventions, like, um, instead, like, changing it up to, like, brush up on my, like, teleprompter skills and, like, redo my reel to, like, apply it more to, like, on camera, like, host work and, like, create, like, voiceover reels. Um, like as a spoke model and things of that nature. So I'm trying to like figure out like how to like adjust my experiences and my skills that I already had that I know that I probably won't be able to like utilize initially. And mm-hmm. um, like once we reopen and be able to like transfer it to the things that I think will um, start to like reopen or that are already going on now. Like even like during during the lockdown, like we're able to like do like self tapes and. Um, like self record things like this podcast, like, which is an amazing idea. Yay! <laughs> so yeah, I was gonna ask, have you had you have you had any auditions or what have you been doing? I mean, you're creating your own projects, but has anything kind of come mm-hmm. along during this time period where they're just like self tape and film everything and you get paid and do your projects at home? I suppose. <laughs> um, you know, I have not um, booked anything, but is paid yet <laughs> mm-hmm. so, so no income coming in um, I feel you. but yeah um but there definitely have been like quite a few like self-tape auditions and um, that i've been doing and um, as well as just like working on like my own personal projects mm-hmm. um like my like my sketch comedy like web series but like i of course i started a long time ago and like i've been able to like edit and, and publish and the last episode that, like, we shot, like, right before um, all of this went down. Um, and then just, like, writing and um, planning for it, like, as far as, like, being able to, like, um, get it ready to start working on again, like, once it's all over. And, like, submitting it to, like, festivals and, and like, for grants and things of that nature. So I've been, like, working, working a lot on, like, my own personal projects. Do you find that you're so good at finding personal projects that you overwhelm yourself because that's what (laughs) I've been struggling with. Like I finish one personal project and then I go into the next and I'm like, Oh my God, that's a great idea. I have all this time. Let's do this too. And then I get another virtual audition open call. And then I'm like, Oh, I got to do this too. And then I enrolled in a class and all of a sudden I'm like, Oh my God, like I'm so overwhelmed. And I did this all to myself. And I don't know if, if I'm the only (laughs) one just feeling a little overwhelmed right now has that happened to you at all um a little bit I mean like it is definitely a situation like where there's no questions asked like I can keep myself busy um with no problem like whatsoever Mm -hmm. um and especially like being being like here like with my family um there's a lot of things that like I'm in the end like doing like with them as well um, like around the house, like we work on the, the gutters, like we sounds like um, fun. are doing the garden, like we're organizing things. Um, so it's been helping them a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, as well as just like playing board games. Like we have horses here. So like we like go riding. Um, <laughs> and as well as like just being like, Oh my goodness. Like there's all these great ideas that I have that I want to do. Mm-hmm. Um, again, like as like those personal projects that like, Again, like, there's no questions asked, but like I can keep myself busy, just like ongoing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess like I'm, I don't actually feel like overwhelmed. Like I, I sometimes like feel maybe a little, a little bit guilty that I don't get to them because I kind of feel like mm. I don't have a good excuse why I didn't, except for that time just gets away from me. Yeah, I, I get that. I guess, I guess, like, I'm trying to put it in a better way is that, um, like, one of the excuses before was always that, like, I don't have the time. And now I'm like, well, I have plenty of time because I'm not working. So why can't I? (laughs) You know, that's, it's, like, funny, but it's, like, not funny at the same time because this should be a time where we should be able to 
sit down and watch Netflix all day if we want to and breathe and relax. And it is scary and there is a lot of emotions. <laughs> and for some reason, the pressure we put on ourselves to get things done or to not get things done is really a roller coaster. I mean, and that's why I wanted to chat with you to see like what you were doing and are you forcing yourself to take a break every so often or do you just like, okay, it's time to relax and spend time with family? A little bit of both. Like I, I tend to like end up getting like super focused mm-hmm. um, and, and closing myself away for like telling like my family, like I need, I need to focus right now. Um, like especially if I have, um, like a self submit like audition or something to, that has a deadline and like, no, I need to do this. Mm-hmm. Um, so like, I'll be like super focused. And then like, right after that, I'll be like, okay, what do you need me to do? Mm-hmm. And you brought the cat with you too, right? I'd imagine. Yeah. Do you let the cat mm-hmm. go hang out with all the horses? I'm just curious. <laughs> um, well, he's, he's mainly an indoor and like a city cat. Mm-hmm. So I've been, I've been very like kind of cautious about like, um, him going outside like I will accompany him yeah um, and make sure that I'm like with him at all times because I I don't think that he understands the dangers or could get lost or could get hurt yeah you know um I'm supervising him <laughs> supervising the cat you know I even had an idea like and this is where my brain goes it just doesn't stop I'm over here thinking, wow, you have horses. You might as well get that on tape and add it to your reel or add it as a, add it as a <laughs> special clip because that's a specialty and I don't know how to do that. So this is my problem why I feel overwhelmed. And then I feel guilty because, because people are really struggling and having a hard time. What do you think um, is going to happen with the dance world and auditions because you know you go to these auditions and sometimes they're like I'm not gonna say cattle calls but there's like 50 60 70 80 100 people in a small small room what do you think is gonna happen have you heard anything um I definitely have not heard anything like official at all Mm -hmm. um as far as like the future of like auditions and things of that nature um I know that during this lockdown situation, like, um, as far as, like, classes mm-hmm. go, since, like, we can't, like, meet in person for classes, like, things are going to, um, like, streaming, like, virtual classes for, like, um, Instagram Live or, like, a lot of um, teachers are doing it, like, through, like, Zoom um, okay. now as well. Um, especially like the the dance studios, like they're um, they're transferring it into like Zoom and and being able to like charge per class, and mm. um, so that they're not completely losing um, God and God's money. Like they're trying to like recoup some mm-hmm. um, like work during this. So, um, so like the professional studios like Millennium and uh, and, and Edge Pack and and things like that. Like they're they're going to like streaming classes that you have to to pay for and like log into wow have you have you done one yet I have yeah it's interesting (laughs) is it weird being in your room or like being in a much more confined space trying to like work it and be all sexy and you turn around and there's an old photo of you from high school with your braces on like (laughs) I feel like it would be like oh awkward (laughs) you should tape it yes I mean yeah like it's I I will always opt for like in-person classes, like once I can, um, because like although it's nice to still feel connected and to still be able to like try to like exercise and and learn choreography and like stay connected like to the dance world, I don't have. It's not a good environment for it. Like I don't have the space. Yeah, I either end up like trying to do it like in a very confined space, like inside, or I try to like go do it like outside, um, which is like really bad, like ground. Mm. It's not flat. Mm. It's not a good surface. Right. Um, so, the last thing so, you want to like, do it's is really hard. Yeah, the last thing you want to yeah. do is twist your ankle in the middle of all this and come back when when everything opens and you can't walk. Like that would be the worst possible situation. Yeah, so so I definitely feel like in my situation, like I can't. It's very hard for me to actually do it like full out. Yeah, um, and get and get like the true experience. Plus, like, um, like one of my my like, pet peeves, like that I discovered about like the virtual 
mm-hmm. um, classes is that like the, the chat act aspect of it. Oh, people will just like continually um, like type comments um, that have sometimes like nothing to do with the class. What are they typing? <laughs> Work, get it. <laughs> Yes, yeah, like stuff like that, or like, <laughs> or oh my goodness, have you checked out this other person? Like, they're like having like full on conversations. That is like, so annoying. Chat. And I'm just like going like, oh my goodness, you would not do this. This would not be allowed in like a live class. And mm-hmm. um, please stop like filling up the comments um, and distracting everybody like from like real questions. Because I mean, like the choreographers like will check the chat. Mm-hmm. Um, in order to see if there's, like, legitimate questions about the combo and to see, like, if people are picking it up. Mm-hmm. I have a comment. <laughs> you know, um, I – once you said that, it reminded me that because I have been following all of these Instagram lives and um, I've been doing some of the Zooms as well, and sometimes, y'all, you guys – the questions that you ask can easily be found on a Google search and you're just taking up time. That's how I feel like some of the questions are like the most ridiculous things. And it's like, we only have 45 minutes here. And for her to have to explain this is taking up time that could have been used for a really important question that someone actually had that could have been benefited all of us. That's a personal pet peeve of mine. And I know exactly what you're talking about. Cause I, (laughs) <laughs> actually had to take a moment and like stop watching them because people want to be asking the same questions over and over. And, um, these are more so along the lines of acting. And the question every single time is what is a good self tape setup? Y'all go on Amazon and look, do a Google search, <laughs> find a chat room or find a Facebook group, go in the search bar, type it up. You'll find a bajillion answers. And the thing is they ask it on every single one. So it's, drives me bananas. Hey guys, sorry to interrupt. I know you're having a good listen right now, but we have decided to separate this episode into part one and part two. So make sure to go ahead. Once you're finished, go check out part two, where we talk about what's the future looking about the impact of sports and arts and much, much more. In the meantime, thanks for listening. Um, If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, feel free to leave it in the comments below. Thanks for listening. And you guys stay safe, stay positive, and I'll catch you on part two.